here we go. So earlier today I did a commentary, really a rant, but I did it in two. I did it um, twice. Anyway, uh, that's because I had, um, well, that's because that's what I was going to talk about. That's what I was talking about today. Um, but last night before I, um, uh, you know, well, last night I wrote my friend who actually went to a, a military. Um, took a military course with a bunch of military people. And I said, hey, and I asked him about wars, right? And so he responded, let me tell you what he responded, and I'll respond to his response. Let's give him, let me see, hold on a second, oh, get, 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 get to my, where's my, well, in fact, let's, let's give him a name, because I don't want to say him all the time. Since I'm, since my nom de voice is T, let's call him, I don't know, JB, okay? Um, Oh, I guess this was the thing that he got. Oh, okay. I thought it was from him. No, this is the thing he got from uh, uh, it's a HTP, something like, uh, which wars did the United States of America win in history? Okay. Which wars did the United States of, uh, of America win? Well, instead of responding to JB, I'm going to respond to this article that's uh, from some www.quora.com. Okay. That's them. So let me. Hold on a second. Let me. Take off my spiffy jacket. Uh, <clears throat> so I don't want to talk to JB. I talk to Quora, Quora, Quora. I talk to Quora. Okay, now Quora says the wars that the American, uh, um, well, the Americans won was the War of Independence, which I covered in my thing before, saying that well, it's not technically it wasn't American and it was British against the British, if you will, if you get what I mean. Okay. Then it says the War of 1812. That's the one I said. Yes, that's the one they won. The only one they won. The Mexican-American War. Well, that was sort of a war of aggression. It wasn't like they came to the borders. So let's let's just redefine this. So I was wrong. I should have said wars. I should have said. Um, uh, well, I should say not wars of uh, of aggression and incursion. Okay. The Civil War, okay, that's sort of like American America, it's not really, it doesn't count. Right? The Indian Wars, that's again, a war of aggression for land grabs, okay? The Spanish American War, war of aggression, we covered that talking about the you know, Buffalo Shoulders, no, no, we'll get into that. Um, uh, along with the Allies in World War I, World War II, oh, along with the Allies, remember where I said that? World War II, remember the World War I was a stalemate, so World War I and World War II is just an extension of each other, okay? Okay. Um, and, and I won't get into the whole banking thing or whatever have you. But remember, World War II was actually won. The final throws was not from the bomb of Nagasaki and, and, and Hiroshima. It was from um, basically the Russians beat up on the Germans. Okay? Uh, the Korean War. Okay, again, that was, they said that this is considered a stalemate. However, again, that's a war of aggression. In fact, that war was perpetrated by, uh, by uh, General MacArthur. Uh, go go read, read, read the, hidden, uh, the Hidden History of, of, of the Korean War by uh, I.F. Stone and you'll understand what I mean. Um, however, the U.S. completely retook the land and previously formed to the Congress of Iowa. So in the sense, they also won the war as well. That's, that's, that's not true. However, the peace treaty has never been signed. Right, right, right. The Bay of Pigs was, it was an incursion. Now they get into incursion, but that was a total disaster. Ah, well, but it wasn't a war, okay? Um, and then blamed on Kennedy, blah, blah, blah. The Vietnam War is usually considered a stalemate. However, the U.S. essentially politically defeated in the war. Okay, now we get into the point. Uh, let me go back to the Vietnam War in, in a second. Uh, did they mention uh, uh, something about South Vietnam? There's a storm. Again, that was a. Uh, that was per. Ah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not. It's nothing that that that, that, that we uh, that they did to us. We uh, the war occurred in land grab, oil, the rest of that stuff. Okay. Um, uh, Kuwait. That's the whole Kuwait thing. Afghan and Iraq. We'll get to that in a second. Now let me go back to Vietnam. Interesting enough. Uh, I mean that's all they have, right? Yeah. Uh, Saddam Hussein. Blah blah blah. Taliban. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Let me get to Vietnam now. During the Vietnam era, I was in the Air Force, okay, from 1970 to 1974. I was stationed, luckily enough, I didn't go overseas. I wasn't, I, I was in theater or even in, in, in the Philippines. I, was, I never left the country. But I was stationed at, at Hawaii Air Force Base, which is a MAC command. MAC stands for Military Airlift Command. That's when I first uh, met, uh, met, I never had 
things with them. That's when I first realized that we were training the Saudi Air Force, the Saudi Arabia Air Force, and they were now currently bombing Yemen and you know, all this that stuff. Well, they were uh, being trained in basically the early 70s by the United States, okay? Because I saw the patches in Saudi Arabia, they were, they were pilots, okay? Now, the thing about uh, McGuire Air Force Base, what happened was we were a place where the blood, all the blood that went you know, the blood, you know, blood donations, whatever. They, they went, they shipped from Maguire to Vietnam, okay? You know, you separate the blood. There was a special blood banking unit there. I was in the laboratory, I wasn't in the blood banking unit, but there was all the, all the forces were, were, were represented, you know, the, 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 the Army, the Navy, the, um, the Marines. Were there Marines there? I don't know if the Marines, I think the, well, the Marines, yeah, the Marines there because, no, no, I won't get to that, not the Air Force, there was a four, whatever, you know, not Coast Guard, not whatever, so they were all there with this bloodbacking effort, right? But I could tell how the, how the war was going by how much blood was being shipped to Vietnam. And let me tell you, from 1970, 74, to 73, 74, we were losing totally losing. There was a lot, a lot of blood kept on increasing and increasing. So we can say that all oh, it was because of the, the, the people of back in the United States protesting. That's not actually true. What really um, um, uh, did that, um, and I should go back and say that before I went to the Air Force, I was actually in a, uh, well, a, 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 a revolutionary cell at my at Bronx Community College. You know, we took over the college, got kicked out of That's in another video. Anyway, well, we were trained by two guys, uh, Bobby and Billy Shepard, who actually you know, were Marines in like, uh, that would be 64, 65, right, right before they, they came to college, you know. And they told us what was happening in Vietnam. The people knew, but we're here. You have to understand, in that area, the reason why I was even in the Air Force is because I had that walkie talkie. Because we, there was a lottery, in other words, we were being, uh, he was conscripted into, 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 the, into, the, into, the, um, into the forces, okay? So, so what, what, so, so what you have to understand, the people at that era that was in it, these people weren't volunteers. They weren't volunteers. Volunteers didn't come to afterwards. But we were constricted. Therefore, people had questions. They said, hey, wait a second. I have no beef with this 13 year old. What's going on? But well, hey, hey. So, so there was stuff happening on the ground in theater that, that, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't happening. You, you've heard those stories where, where the Vietnamese, they, 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 the Viet Cong, rather, they would blast these uh, messages say, so brothers, why are you fighting us? No, we're just as like you, blah, blah, blah. We're being, you know, victimized by blah, 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 blah. So all that stuff, all that stuff was happening at the same time. But check this out. So what I'm trying to tell you is we're, we're going to lose the war anyway. You can, they can say what they were. It was losing the war. But here's the interesting thing. I took a definitive trip one time in the, in the, early, in the early 90s, well, early 1990, for four months. I was in Belize. And I don't have the habit of going to libraries. I just take a book off the shelf. But I was in this library in, um, where was it? I think it was in Dangriga. Um, Anyway, I just went to the library and said, no, no, I was the same by wherever it was. I took a book for some reason. I walked, there was nobody in this library, not even staff. I took a book off the shelf. It was about Vietnam, written from a Vietnamese perspective. And I looked at because remember, this is Belize, this is Central America. It's not, you know, it's not like America. It's not books, not like that. And I looked at, I just opened up a page. It was really interesting. What they were saying, what, what, what I read was that, uh, they, they had the tunnels, remember, they, you hear about the tunnels like that, but they had a whole hospital under the, or a whole medical facility under the tunnel, which is interesting because I was American, I was related to it. And the Viet, the, the, the Viet Cong command would tell these folks, you know, because every, I think it was every Friday they would have a cultural program in, in, in these tunnels. And the Viet Cong uh, command would say, look, you gotta, you gotta chill on that because, you know, they might be able to hear you and you will, you know, you will, you know, they'll, they'll get you, they'll, they'll destroy the tunnel. And they wrote back, no, we're not giving up our culture for, for this war. It was extraordinary. I just read that section of the book and I said, wow. That shows you the resolve. They wouldn't even give up their culture because of war. You see, they wouldn't give up anything. So the, the people that determined, it's like, shh. And I can only equate it to that. And this is a stretch, right? To a basically the black American experience, you know. But yeah, we're crumbling now, but the, the determination that, that, that us descendants of chattel slavery, from, from slavery through, um, through, through, through antebellum, through Jim Crow, through the, all the lynchings, through the red light, all the rest of that up to this day we had was from resolve. That's why they're trying to crush, crush black people now, because that resolve is like the resolve of the Viet Cong, you see? But let's get to uh, this Afghanistan, and, 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 uh, which is the longest war that we've ever been in, right? If you want to call it a war. Right? But remember, this is a volunteer army. 
But if you really look onto this thing, it's not really, the American army is not really fighting. This is a, a mercenary army. People are being paid. In fact, it's interesting because you, uh, uh, the way the army is constructed now, it started right after Vietnam. You would volunteer, and so only volunteers would go, right? And then these people would be trained, you had special forces and all the rest of that stuff. But these, these folks, you know, they're trained. Now they're perfectly trained you know, SEALs and all the rest of that stuff, you know, para, para rescue. I was almost in para rescue. And I'm gonna get to that point right now. Anyway, uh, and so when they, when they, you know, get out of the service, then they're now recruited by the likes of uh, Blackwater, you know, the, the, that Eric Prince guy and his, his sister, I don't know, the Department of Education, whatever it is. Uh, and these are mercenaries, and they get paid like three, four, I don't know, whatever times more than regular soldiers. So soldiers says, hey, let me get some training, get out and become, and get, join these guys. And you hear all those atrocities that happens with them. So the wars right now are wars of money, being, they're being fought by mercenaries, by people like, 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 like the princes of the world, you know? But interesting enough, think what will happen if, remember, I started this whole thing and this other thing, talking about uh, how they were dumping on, on Uruguay for, for um, you know, making marijuana legal and the banks were coming in. So banking is all, always in this. Now, think what would happen if you wouldn't finance these wars. No more, the, the Eric Princes would have had all the drug trade, because like the drugs finance these wars. Remember the war, they, they didn't mention the Contra and that thing, the Contra, Contra the war where, you, where they was taking the cocaine and bringing it up to LA and, and, and shutting people out on crack and blah, blah, blah. That whole cycle, you can, you can research that for yourself. But if you take away, the, if you make drugs legal, so that, that money stream goes away, and then you don't fund the war. Congress doesn't fund the wars, right? Because they're in the pockets of the, the banks and all this is that, that want these wars. If you take that away, there is no war. There are no, there are no soldiers to fight these wars because they're not being paid. Just think about this. So the, 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 the upshot is this, if we go to cryptocurrency, we can have peace on earth. That's just an um, opinion, a message from me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect. <laughs>